Hey everybody, welcome to our studio show here. This week it's round nine of the FIM MX uh, World Championship and we're at Majora, one of the most iconic venues in the uh, World Motocross Championship calendar. This week, my guest on the studio show, Geordie Tixier, Adam Wheeler, of course, and we've got Max Nagel coming up and team manager for Kawasaki Racing Team, uh, Francois Lemarier. And of course, we've got a whole bunch of questions we want to ask him. But before we get started this week, let's see what happened two weeks ago when we were in France. Here's some highlights from MX2, race two. Start of MX2 race two, all eyes on Valentin Guillo, Jordi Tixier, and Jeffrey Hurlings. Benoit Patrol in the thick of it again as he headed down the start straight. Once again, it was Jeffrey Hurlings who grabbed the Fox hole shot. Geiser and Tonkoff were well placed. Max Anstey, who were on board with here, didn't make a great start, but he held a nice tight line through the first few corners. But up the hill, Valentin Guillo and Damon Growlis crashed out spectacularly. Gio eventually picked himself up from the crash, rejoined the race and set about carving through the field. He was lucky to get up. Both riders were. But it was a frantic start to the race for Gio. Tim Geiser found himself in second on the Garibaldi Honda, chasing down Jeffrey Hurlings. As the number one, Geordie Tixier, made his move into third with that pass on Paul's Jonas. 91 of Jeremy Sewer couldn't find a way past the 59 of Alex Tonkov, but Max Anstey on the 99 Kawasaki could, and he eventually came home in fifth. Tonkov went out, and that helped the Brit into that fifth place. Tonkov would eventually come home in seventh place. But it was frantic at the front for Jeffrey Hurlings once more, this time being chased all the way by the Slovenian Tim Geiser. But eventually, Hurlings hung on for the win. Geiser was second. Jordi Tixier was third. And Hurlings, your overall winner here this weekend. Geiser second, Tixier third. And Hurlings, of course, extends his lead at the top of the championship table in MX2. Well, that was two weeks ago, and I'm pleased to say that one of those guys who was on the podium uh, last week or two weeks ago in France, uh, Jordi Tixier, Team Monster Energy Kawasaki, joins me now. Uh, Jordi, welcome. Um, as a defending champion, it was a pretty tough start to the season for you, wasn't it? Um, not the best results in Qatar, a 13th and a and no start in Thailand, that suspension in Argentina. In terms of your world championship, it doesn't get any tougher than that, does it? Yeah, sure. You know, uh, I mean, I cannot say it's normal, but the last few years, for sure, the beginning of the season was really bad. But uh, this year was, was the worst I had. Uh, the first few races was OK. I mean, I was on the top eight all the time. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that penalty I get in Thailand couldn't ride in Argentina, so uh, I was I was really disappointed. And then, uh, I can say after after Thailand, I was like, okay, I stop racing. Uh, I just try to to think a little bit about it and do something else. So for two weeks, I didn't do anything, even sport or riding. And um, and then the motivation was back and. Uh, yeah, try to be on a box when I'm back. So that's what I did. And you did. You bounced back pretty well in Trentino, didn't you? Yeah, sure. Uh, Trentino is not uh, it's not my favorite track. It's like really slippery with little stones. But uh, I did a good practice and uh, and then yeah, I had two two really good start, two all shot, and then uh, yeah, my speed was okay. I mean, my speed was like to be third, and I was third uh, both motors. So uh, again on the box, so I was really happy. Just looking back at Trentino here, um, where you did get your first podium of the year, and obviously not been off it since then. Um, how good was it to be back racing again? Because um, you know it looked. Even though you had fantastic starts, you, you kind of faded a little bit in the races. Were you just missing those two weeks of training on and, and bike training? Because you looked a little, little bit, how we say, ring rusty. Yeah, sure. But uh, maybe uh, the two weeks I stopped maybe makes me makes me feel better and more confident on the bike. Because when I was back, I was just playing and uh, yeah, enjoy with my bike. And uh, when I was back, uh, my goal was just. Just have fun, and we see the result. And the result was there with two good start, and uh, for sure the, the speed was not was not the best because I was third, and uh, Jeffrey was Jeffrey was faster than team also that weekend. 
So, uh, but third, I mean, be on the box after the, the the bad beginning of the season. It's always it's always really good for me, for the team, and uh, for everyone around. Mm. Was there something about 2014, Jordi, that you learned that being consistent and being on the box, you know, on the podium every other week pays off, doesn't it? Because you know, we had one of the most exciting championship finishes ever last year. It was uh, I don't know. You've learned, haven't you, that consistency pays off. Yeah, sure, and uh, every season is my goal, you know. Uh, I'm training hard in the winter, and uh, always, I, alri- I al- always feel ready at the beginning of the season, but uh, the sp- I don't know why, but the speed is not there. Maybe a lot of pressure all the time. But uh, al- always when we are back in Europe, uh, I think my goal is just to be on the box and be consistent uh, the most I can. And uh, But, I mean, now five podiums in a row, I never did it in, my si- in, uh, in the past, so uh, that's really exciting, and uh, hopefully a lot of more. I remember, um, Paul, you wanted to talk about Vulcan Squad, which was another good result for you in the sand. And I remember last year we came to Lommel, the Grand Prix of Belgium, and Jeffrey Herlings even hobbled into the paddock on his crutches, mm-hmm. I think, expecting to see you not do so well and his championship still be o- alive, you know, stronger. But again, like in Holland, you know, you, you've proved that you've mastered the sand and you've taken podium results across different kind of tracks and different conditions. Yeah, sure. You know, uh, the sand is uh, something I like, uh, especially because you have a lot of line and it's quite easy to pass compared to the hard pack. But, uh, you know, when I was young, I never been there because my dad was like, yeah, it's too dangerous, it's too bumpy, so better we stay on the hard pack next mm. to the home, it's flat and everything. But uh, since 2010, I'm riding quite a lot in, in the sand and I think I'm coming not so bad now. So, um, Loman was really good last year. Uh, yeah, I know Jeffrey was there and it was like... I don't expect you to win one moto, but yeah. uh, mm-hmm. I did it. So it uh, was, was really good. And this year again, like again on a box, so uh, pretty good. He probably also said, I don't expect you to win the championship <laughs> either. But <laughs> 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 it was, a, like we said, it was a great finale. But um, France, two weeks ago. I mean, man, what an atmosphere. Um, probably some of the best racing we've seen in MX2 all season long. We saw great racing at Matley Basin uh, just before that. But what was it like for you? The atmosphere, the whole race, the circuit. Um, tell us about your French Grand Prix weekend, particularly race one. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, French GP, it's always different than the order. I mean, for myself, I'm French. And I think uh, the French Grand is one of the best of the season. So um, first model, I had a... I had a good start, I mean, and uh, I was second, Jeffrey had a little crash, and when I took the lead, I couldn't hear, like, all the crown, all laps, so it was just, was just an amazing moment for me, and, um, I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, it was just great. Uh, second model was a little bit less, but uh, anyway, still on the box in front of the French crown, it's always good, so uh, amazing weekend for me. But, I mean, this race had everything, didn't it? You know, you led the race when Jeffrey fell. What do you think when you come over the brow of the hill and you see Jeffrey on the deck here? I was like, now it's my chance maybe to win the moto, because, I mean, the first few laps just before his crash, I was a little bit faster every lap. And uh, I catch him step by step, and he did that uh, that little crash. But uh, when I took the lead, I was like, okay, now I'm just give 100%. That's what I did. But uh, the last 10 minutes of the moto, I was one second slower than uh, Valentin and Jeffrey, so they passed me. But anyway, I did a good race. I was happy to, to lead one moto. And uh, hopefully, before the end of the season, I'm going to need all moto and uh, win the race. I mean, the, the French Grand Prix, Jordi, was a nice little warm-up, you could say, for the Motocross of Nations this year. Last year, a bizarre situation for you, world champion, right at, at the end of the season, didn't make the final three. I mean, we've talked about that, you know, enough in the press. But, I mean, you've got to fancy your chances of being in an A this year. And it's going to be an amazing event, really, isn't it, based on two, 10 years ago? Yeah, of course. It uh, would be really cool, really cool to ride for the nation. Uh, I mean, last year was was disappointed for me because I get a world championship and for myself I was like, yeah, I'm going to ride a motocross nation. It's one of the best motocross of the year. I mm. mean, so uh, I was a bit disappointed, but, you know, it's not my choice. Uh, I leave it like this. I was world champion. That was my first goal. I did it. So uh, hopefully this year is going to be my time, uh, especially in front of the French crown. I think it's just amazing. So, uh, But there's a lot of French riders who can who can ride a motocross nation uh, even the guy in America like Musquin or Pulse can also ride. So, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, for Pascal Fino, it's going to be a really tough uh, choice, but uh, we'll see what happens. All right. Well, look, uh, two more questions. Um, we just mentioned it earlier in the program. You have five podiums in a row now. Uh, very, very consistent. How far are you away from winning a Grand Prix? I think I'm not so far. Uh, maybe a good start, a little bit more speed, and uh, keep the speed like all motos. That's uh, most of the time my problem. The last 10 minutes, I just slow down. So I don't know why, because physically I feel really good, but uh, maybe I'm thinking too much about the race. 
So uh, I think winning a moto is not so far. Uh, I'm training pretty hard for that. So I'm just going to give my best this weekend and uh, hopefully it can happen there. It will be cool. All right. And uh, final question coming from Twitter. Um, Ryan asks, do you think the level is higher this year in MX2? Or is it that Jeffrey is just more beatable this year? I think the level is higher and uh, every year is higher because uh, you can see Jeffrey, uh, I think now is 100%. I mean, I can understand beginning of the season it was not 100% because he has difficult winter. But now it's just uh, 100% and a lot of riders is possible to win a moto. And uh, that's why it's even more excited because uh, we know Jeffrey is not going to take the lead and win the moto with 30 second uh, gap. So uh, even for us, we are really excited. And when we are behind the gate, uh, we just want to, we just want to, we just want to win, so um, I think the, the yeah the level is higher. Sure. Just one more yeah. thing, quickly, Paul, before before we finish with Jordy. Um, it's worth pointing out you've got to go MXGP next year because of your age. Um, how do you feel about that? Do you think you've got options? What What do you think about 2016? Uh, I'm not thinking so much about the moment. Uh, I mean, I have some proposition already from a pretty good team, so uh, we are speaking at the moment. So I cannot say more. But uh, my feeling is quite good, you know. I didn't ride so much with the 450, but I think I have good uh, good style for that kind of bike. So um, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm not thinking about too much about it, but uh, hopefully, yeah, I'm going to have a great team and uh, also a great season for my first uh, year with the boss. I mean, high level. <laughs> All right, well, look, uh, Jordi Tixier, Monster Energy Kawasaki, MX2 rider um, on a streak of podiums at the moment, has to be said. All the best this weekend. Thanks for dropping by. And um, we'll look forward to seeing what you do from now until the rest of the season. Thanks a lot. Thank you very um, much. Before we meet our next guest, though, Max Nagel, who happens to be leading the uh, MXGP World Championship, uh, let's take a quick look at what happened at France two weeks ago. Here's highlights from race two. Roman Faber was the man. Next GP race two, and on board with Gauthier Paul, and as he got squeezed to the inside, it was Max Nagel who grabbed the Fox hole shot, but Paul and Ferris banged bars as David Philippotts and Sean Simpson both crashed at turn one. Kai Rowley and Paul Ant not best placed this time around, as Max Nagel, Todd Waters, Roman Fevre, and Evgeny Boroshev were the lead riders at the start of the race. Fevre going through on Waters to get himself into second and then went after the championship leader as Paul Ant started to carve his way through the field. He found his way past Kenderdijk, but then it started to go wrong. He started to make a few mistakes, started to drop backwards. Kai Rowley was through on the HRC rider. Suddenly, the Frenchman was all lost at sea, but he started to respond, found his way back past the eight-time world champion and got himself back into sixth position. Genny Bobashev was having a solid day here in France. Got himself into third as Waters then came under attack from Glenn Koldenoff, who was having a great second race as well. In fourth, eventually faded back to fifth. But all eyes on the battle at the front. Max Nagel being passed there for the lead by Roman Fevre, who was in a class of his own. Barely putting a wheel wrong. And even though the team told him to concentrate, they needn't worry as he crossed the line to take his second race win in two weeks. But this time with it, his home Grand Prix victory as well. Febre wins here in France then. Bobrashev second, Kai Rowley third. Nagel extends his lead at the top of the championship table. Kai Rowley second, DeSalle is now third. Everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're Max Nagel now, our uh, MXGP World Championship leader, joins us, and we're just having a bit of a, an off-air moment there, just <laughs> highlighting the, uh, the fantastic boots that he's wearing. The footwear. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because uh, to be fair, though, um, Can't yesterday... Can't make foot up like that, Get on the show, look. To be fair, yesterday when we arrived at the circuit, uh, the weather was great, a little bit humid, a little bit muggy, but then it absolutely rained and water was streaming through the paddock everywhere. It was like a river just ran through this place. We were looking at the track. Fortunately, it hadn't been uh, ripped. It was all sealed. And um, we were all a bit mindful, weren't we? This morning when we had more rain in the night, we thought, OK, delayed schedule. And you were just saying a moment ago, Max, you know, that, uh, well, just tell us what you thought, you know, in terms of all the rain. Yeah, I woke up in the night uh because there, there was so much rain on the camper and I thought, oh, okay, this morning everybody, everything will be cancelled and uh, maybe only pre-qualifying in the afternoon. And then uh, this morning I walked to the track to watch the 125s 
and they were almost not dirty. The track was clean. So yeah. I was, how is that possible? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, Max Nagel, Red Bull Ice One, as far as factory racing, joins us now. Like I say, he is the world championship leader. And it's been a, a pretty uh, impressive start to the season for you. I know we're round nine, but you know, um, how many podiums have you had? Like five race wins, three Grand Prix victories, leading the championship. Um, doesn't get any better than that, does it? I know we're only halfway, though. Yeah, we're only halfway, and uh, I'm really happy with the season so far, how it's going. Only the last uh, three GPs now, like in England and France, also Spain, it was not a perfect uh, weekend. And uh, I want to get back to on the podium as soon as possible now. I like We try everything, we push hard, and um, the team does a really good job, the bike is good. So I think it's just about me now um, to be back on the podium again. At the start of the season, were you surprised at how well things went in Qatar? Uh, two race wins, the overall uh, lead in the championship. Or were you kind of almost expecting it? No, I never expected. But um, normally with overseas GPs, I'm always really good prepared. Like um, normally this is always my best results, except maybe Thailand. That was not a good one, but I was not feeling good there. But all the rest, I'm, I try to be prepared good as possible. And um, I really like the overseas tracks there. They're different to the European style. Just looking at you uh, here in Qatar, I mean, I was calling it in commentary and it was just uh, an astounding, an outstanding performance uh, from you there. And obviously you'd been saying that, and people say this, don't they, at the beginning of the season, oh yeah, my new team, the best bike I've ever ridden, the, test team, the best team I've ever ridden for and everything else. And you were highlighting that again, um, but you really have settled in there, haven't you? And that first Grand Prix, two wins, was perfect uh, proof. Yes, um, already last year I had uh, the first motor win, what was already really good, and the second overall. And this year I could make it even better. And then also for, for the team where I've been now with the uh, Ice One Racing there. So, yeah, they had not so much luck the last few years. Anti is working there so hard. And uh, that was something also giving them now, you know. So they're really motivated again. And uh, they are also in a different position now than the last few years. Mm. So they're so happy, they work so hard. and. It's nice to give them something back, you know, and uh, also for myself, it's always better when you're somewhere up front, of course. Go yeah, on. I mean, Max, with complete respect, I'm not sure there's many people that would have said round nine of 2015, you know, Max Nagel was going to be holding the red plate lead in the World Championship. Was there a part in, in pre-season where everyone was talking about Cairoli, Villapoto, Villapoto, Cairoli, and you were kind of rubbing your hands thinking, well, I know how fast I am? Um, no, I mean, there was always a talks between them. Always was Bartoni and Filopoto, of course. This that's about the media they do, because um, for the moment they were the best two riders in the world. So for sure they make the story, and nobody cares so much in this moment about the other riders. But um, we also training hard. We do our best, and um, the preseason races I always took it quite easy. Never take any risk. Just do some riding testing, and then uh, yeah, when we went to Qatar and then also Argentina and these races. I really started really pushing hard and I could feel that everything I do, it went well. I was always still feeling under control and safe. And finally then I could pass them and beat them also in the races. And then that makes, makes you so happy and gives mm. you so much confidence and motivation for the next rounds. Yeah, well, let's talk about Argentina actually, because uh, as you said, you know, championship lead after Qatar and then you lose the championship lead in, uh, in Thailand, but you bounce back in Argentina. Fantastic Great. performance. I mean, it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. You obviously like the track there. Yes, I think that was one of the best track I ever ridden in my life. It was really, it was amazing track mm. and I hope we will stay there for a couple of years. And then um, normally the people always thought that when I got a good start, I can, I can win the race. But if I'm not in a good position, I'm, I cannot win. But there I passed Filipoto, Antonio, and all the guys from the back. What was it about the track that you liked so much? Was it the nature of the ground? Was it the fact that it was wide or that it was flow? What, what was it? Because everybody commented. They said they really liked that place. Yeah, it was more like an American track, let's say. It was really wide, really fast. It was always third, fourth gear and always a flow. Like there was never a turn what stops you. So you could always take the speed and have a nice ride. And uh, also many options of lines, like you can see inside, outside, you could go everywhere. Where many tracks, um, we have, for example, Arco or now Majora, you have to follow the guys. There's just one fast line, mm. and there you could go everywhere you want. But um, as we just catch the rest of this, you know, you did come over the line, um, as we said, another overall Grand Prix victory. But you followed that up in Trentino. You just mentioned how difficult Trentino was, yet 
I remember talking to you after the second race and um, you were saying that in order to win that race, you had to push early on in the beginning to get a gap, but you were riding so on the limit, maybe even over the limit. But is that what having the championship lead does or is that what putting yourself in a position to be leading the championship almost, is that what it does to you? You, you know, you just... Or is this a different Max that we're seeing now, maybe due to a little bit of fatherhood going on in the background as well? Or? Yeah, I think in some way I'm a bit changed what, what, what is about riding, you know, about the, the intensity you push and you, you, the effort, you know. Also in the week when I'm training, I, I, I really try to always give 100%. And uh, like in Arco, when, when we went there for the GP, I was not so happy actually because I don't really like this track. I'm always a bit struggling there because you don't have the ruts, it's really slippery. And then um, second race, when I got the, the start, I just told to myself, now you need to go for it and do everything you can. And it was really on the edge of the limit what I did. It was many times really sketchy, but I could make that lead and then just continue from there, you know, and win the race. And that I was really surprising myself about the second heat that uh, because I never expected I can do it this way. I mean, Paul mentioned becoming a father to young Mason, your son. But, um, you know, Max, I think there's some other factors involved as to why you're leading the championship and so strong, not just the team and the bike, but, you know, you've steered, you steer clear of injury, you know, apart from that, that rib uh, pre-season. And also your diet, sorting out your diet, because, you know, the last couple of years we've seen you struggling at some GPs with stomach infections or viruses. Um, those have been pretty big factors, haven't they, to help you? Yeah, a lot. That was last year... Um because the GP of Lommel, I even had to quit the second heat because I was completely done, like my body was so tired. And then, yeah, I don't know. We, we just found this uh, diet thing, you know, that, uh, I've, uh, that I'm allergic about some food, what I was eating a lot. But yeah, you don't know if you don't make the tests. And uh, now we could find out and I have to change my complete diet. And now I'm feeling so strong, so healthy. And uh, also in the head, you're more focused and... And also that father thing you said, that gives you also a lot of power, of course. I really enjoy it. You, we just mentioned um, you did regain the championship lead at Valkenswald. You've had the, the, the red plate ever since then. But coming here to Majora, um, how big is this weekend for you? Because obviously you have a 19-point lead in the World Championship. Um, Tony is there in second place now. Who's under more pressure this weekend? Him because of the atmosphere that's going to be generated? Or you because... He's second in the championship and you're riding at his home Grand Prix. How are you, um, how are you playing this one? I think from, from outside, he will get more pressure because everybody expects him here to win, of course. But uh, I have the pressure more from just for myself because I want to keep that red number plate. Of course, we're going next week to my home GP in Teutschental, so I want to show up there with the red plate. And um, I will try again everything now to beat him here, to beat him in front of his home GP. You know, that would, that's my plan. Um, but he was already, I could saw in, in the warm-up already pushing hard mm. to get the fastest lap time where I just cruising around, you know. Um, so for sure he will push hard. I actually want to see the German Grand Prix next week, Paul, because the last few years we've seen rocks and fever. Everybody going crazy for Kenny, but now Max is like you're, you're back at the top of the tree. You know, since maybe for the first time since 2009, 10, 11, that little spell there when you were, you know, factory KTM rider. So it's going to be busy for, for you like it is for Tony here. Yeah, but don't forget, he won a race last year. He'd been injured, didn't <coughs> disappear, came back first race, boom, boom. straight out of the blocks. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and it was a, a great atmosphere there, so I'm hoping for the same again. I, I can't wait to get there. Yeah, of course. That's, I mean, home GP is always, it's really busy for yourself, like all the media you have to do. It's, it's a lot of things going on, but uh, of course, your home GP is always something special. I like the track there, the crowds, the people. Like you said, there will be so many people now cheering for me because um, yeah, Kenny is in the U.S., and... I'm doing really good this year, so there's coming, they're expecting a lot of people coming. So I think it's going to be a really, really nice GP. Good. Well, look, final question, um, and it comes from Twitter. KTR asks, uh, what role does your father now play in your racing? Because obviously he's been very instrumental uh, right until this point. Is he still involved? No, he's, um, he's still coming to GPs, uh, but only to watch the race like a normal spectator. And of course, if something is going not the way it should go or he's coming to the tent and give me an, his advice you know what he thinks because he still know me the best from from all you know um since i'm four years old we were training together so if if some if i'm doing something wrong on the track he can see it immediately and then he's coming and tell me 
what is what is good but for all the rest like the setup of the bike or how we do everything now that's only up to me and the team okay well max nagel red bull ice one husqvarna factory racing thank you for joining us obviously the current championship leader in mxgp um hope you have a, a great weekend here and we look forward to getting to germany as well and uh, good luck for the rest of the season yes thanks a lot right as max disappears it's time to uh talk about our competition and it's a great one from city this time around so this week's competition then comes courtesy of City Boots. And uh, this weekend at the MXGP of Italy, you can win a pair of City Crossfire 2 SRS Antonio Cairoli Limited Edition boots. Those ones right there, the, uh, the multicolored ones. Um, all you've got to do to go in the draw to win is guess the top three overall finishers in the MXGP class in Maggiore. Guess the MXGP podium is basically what we have to do, the top three overall finishes here in Italy. You'll also win MXGP, the official video game and a season's pass to mxgptv.com. And just in the usual way, submit your answer on our MXGP Facebook page or for more information, go to mxgp.com. Don't forget to like or follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. You have to be in it to win it, so good luck with that one. Um, and those, if you guess correctly, those prizes could be making their way to you. Also, don't forget our mid-season sale where MXGP TV is offering a 50% discount now on our season pass, which also includes the FIM Monster Energy Motocross of Nations. Well, our final guest, Francois Lemarie, the team manager for Monster Energy Kawasaki Racing Team, joins us now. Um, welcome, uh, Francois. It's uh, been a busy season, but um, before we start talking about the obvious, of course, uh, you know, Ryan Villapoto. <laughs> um, I want to talk about Tyler Rattray, first of all. Um, in terms of his performances, we are at the halfway stage. Are you happy with how he's performed for you this year? Yeah, I mean, the, the result we, we have with Tyler was the ones we, we could expect from him. So we, we are quite happy. We, he's a good guy, you know. Uh, he's, doing, he's giving his best, so... Yeah, we have good chances technically, and now it's working well. Because some people probably expect him to be higher. He only had like maybe half the motos inside the top ten. Is that something that worries you, or are you looking more at he's been injured and missed some races as well? Uh, to be honest, we were looking at him around top five. Uh, last GPs um, were about the top seven, so it was okay. Did good, uh, good GP in Valkensvard in. Um, in uh, France also was was difficult for him because uh, of of the crash on on, on the qualifying. Uh, so he gave his best. So just watching him here in Valkens, well, do you think the 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 good result here came because he had more than uh, a familiar feeling riding there, having been based in Holland and Belgium um, before he went to the US? Yeah. Uh, Tyler have been always a, a good stand rider, uh, so he feel comfortable on this track, you know, for for a while. So um, it was it was a little bit more more difficult for him to uh, uh, to race in Qatar, in Thailand, and, and new tracks like like that. And and uh, and Valkens was was he was comfortable. How important is he to the team? Um, Obviously, as a test rider, is he a valuable asset to you? Is he a, is he a good test rider? Is he one of the best guys that you've experienced in that respect? Yeah, he has good good feedback on on the good comments on on, on the test we we do with uh, with him uh, on suspension and, and engine wise. He's he's quite good there. Yeah. And so then, how important was Tyler then? How instrumental was he in terms of securing the deal with uh, with Ryan Villapoto? Um, honestly, uh, Ryan. Uh, and Tyler are, are good friends, so uh, we wanted um, all all the parts of the puzzle uh, completed to 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 make the best deal for for Ryan. Um, and yeah, the, 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 uh, we we want Ryan. We wanted Ryan also comfortable, so uh, Tyler can can uh, give him like uh, insurance and can give him. Uh, all the experience he has from from Europe side, um, and we we had a lot of fun during the the, the winter, so was was good. Uh, and obviously helping Ryan settle in and uh, just get more comfortable in and around the team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So with Ryan, then um, obviously he was the big star signing of uh, of the winter for MXGP for Kawasaki as well. Um, 
what are your thoughts on how the beginning of the season went? Obviously, Qatar, a lot of people saying maybe he should have done some preseason races, maybe he should have stayed more time in Europe. You, you know what I mean? Or <laughs> We've heard it. Everybody's been the same. You're obviously the team manager for this team. But when we arrive in Qatar, um, the qualifying, the practice, everybody said how fast he looked. It couldn't have been a, a more dramatic start to the season, could it? You know, the bike problem on the start in the first race. Um, and then obviously into Thailand where he wins a GP, you know. Give us your thoughts on both those first two races. Um, I would say that, that uh, yeah, with a lot of if we can, we can, uh, we can redo, uh, remake uh, a story, you know. Um, what happened did happen, and um, um, Ryan did, did well in the first races. We use, I would say, Qatar maybe as a pre-season races. Yeah. It was a little bit late, but... Uh, uh, he found out what what was the needs for for race in uh, for racing in in Europe. Um, we did give him some advice. Uh, some he took, some other ones uh, he did follow his, his feeling. Uh, but again, we we were not uh, stressed about the result. Uh, he was coming better and better. Also physically, you know, he, he got uh, uh, no race for for ten months. Mm. Uh, so we had to find back the, the rhythm. Uh, we saw in Thailand he had uh, the speed. We did some uh, some more tests between Qatar and Thailand. We modified the I would say the line uh, was good with with our two riders. You can see the images and um, and yeah, physically and and also technically with the bike, uh, we did some some steps in the first races. And unfortunately uh, for for him and for us, uh, the crash uh, in Arco di Trento did come at the wrong moment. Yeah, we'll talk about that in yeah. a moment. So, But, um, yeah, Qatar, Thailand, uh, when we arrived in Thailand, everybody said this had Ryan Villapoto's name written all over it. Of course, he won the first race, third in moto number two, won the overall Grand Prix. Yep. So one week after kind of thinking, mm, OK, there's our pre-season race finished. Um, <laughs> this is the level. Yeah. Were you optimistic then, thinking, right, this is now, we've made that step, everything we did uh, in between the first two races is paid off, it's now worthwhile. Yeah, we, we, know, we all know that, that Ryan has uh, the potential to, to win GPs and, yes. and the championship. Uh, took time, uh, again, like I said, uh, uh, step by step he understood the GPs and, and the team and all people around, you know. Uh, so, uh, step by step we could go to, to, the, to the goal, you know. <laughs> Question for you. <laughs> no, I mean, I think coming on to one thing I saw, especially for the team, Francois, was like it was very crazy for you guys at the beginning of the year. I mean, a lot of attention, you know, from us in the press and also from the fans, everybody, industry. Um, Italy was pretty crazy. Um, and then, you know, with Ryan not being here, it's gone from one extreme to the other, hasn't it? It's, uh, it, I don't know, it must be kind of strange for you guys to deal with. Um, yeah, it's a little bit more quiet now <laughs> around the team. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, people, uh, you know, we display the, the, the bike and people are, are looking at, uh, at it and, uh, and are asking some news from Ryan. Uh, for sure, beginning of season was a lot of exposure because uh, everything was, was new, mm. was uh, the, the big... Uh, uh, the big uh, show i would say the big uh, challenge uh, for for uh, 2015 season so uh, but we we got all organized for for that with with some helps uh, from our partners and uh, and was okay after mm. now we we know with uh, with ryan in june uh, for sure it's more quiet well let's go back to trentino then because i actually thought that given the nature of the ground stones rocks I thought this would be the worst place for him to come back to after the flyaway races. But his, imp his performances impressed me. You know, I thought he rode excellent in the first race and the second race. Um, what did you think? Uh, because obviously that must be so alien to him in terms of what he would ride back home in the US. But also that track was incredibly bumpy. That yeah. was one of the roughest kind yeah. of versions we've seen. La like, yeah. Just like you said, uh, this GP, uh, uh, we were a little bit afraid because we know that, that Ryan never rode on this kind of track. Yeah. Uh, we tried to, to let him ride uh, uh, in, in nice uh, French tracks, you <laughs> know, <laughs> uh, to prepare it. And, uh, and we did some tests, we did prepare. We, uh, uh, and, and like you say, the, the performance he did was, was quite quite good quite uh, up impressive until, up until this point yeah until until that point uh, everything was was uh, 
we were optimistic. Uh, you know, uh, a top four, top three on, on this GP was was fine for for us, for him, because um, he, he did fight and, and uh, it's what what we like from from him. Mm -hmm. Initially, when he got up and walked away, we thought, okay, maybe he's okay. Then he crashed down in the corner. Then the injury became more apparent. Uh, and since then, you know, um, first of all, we were sort of told maybe he could be back in Valkenswad. And then the press conference, he sort of said, yeah, okay, maybe not this weekend, but for sure we'll be back in Spain. And then Matali and, and then his Miss France. And now here we are, you know. So um, what is the, the prognosis? When do we expect him back? You know, yeah, so where, where do you all stand on that? The difficulty on, on, on these injuries, um, uh, you know, it, the, the tailbone, the coccyx, is, uh, so it's a, it's a bone. Uh, we know how to, to how long can can take to recover uh, from a bone injury. Mm. Uh, after uh, this bone, particularly, is uh, a lot of nerves around, mm. so it's very sensitive. Uh, so it's up to 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 Ryan feeling. So he's the only person who can decide if he's able to to ride or, or not. Mm. Um, what I can say uh, is is really wishing, and he was really disappointed uh, to. Uh, to get this happen, uh, nobody can do anything on, on this. Um, so next week he has another medical check to see the improvement and and, and make a plan for, for for his recovery. I think the other big question everybody has, Francois. Sorry to put you on the spot, but I know when you presented the team in Holland, um, there was already a discussion about 2016 with Ryan maybe riding again. Mm -hmm. um, has there been any more movement on that or any more news or any more discussion? I think now the, the, the position of Ryan is uh, he wants first to, to see uh, how he can recover from this injury. Uh, so because with all the people I, I spoke with, uh, like all sportsmen who had this injury and they were not optimistic uh, in the recovery time, I would mm. say, uh, because it can, can be, can mm. take long, so uh, can be the, the thing, uh, uh, the thing that can make it uh, stopping definitely the, the race. Well, know, this I is think. the thing now, isn't it? Since, you know, he's missing all these GPs, you had Xavier coming in as well, Xavier Borg. Um, a lot of people now are even hinting, well, has he already retired? Is this kind of, you know, it's obviously it's difficult to say at the moment, but, um, and I guess from Ryan's perspective, he is a rider who sits down quite a lot, you know, for someone where you're jumping and you're riding whoops and you see him stand up quite a lot. When he's on an outdoor track, he does sit down. There's a lot of energy coming through the seat into the, you know, into the coccyx area. Yes. Yeah. Um, and he seat bounces quite a lot. So he's on that, that tailbone area the whole time, isn't he? So I guess we can understand his delay in, in, in trying to get back and he wants to be 100% fit, I guess. Exactly. We, we Like you just said, you know, uh, he always uh, he sits a lot of, on the bike uh, to, to jump and, and in, ride, in his riding style. Uh, so, so it's really up to, to him and uh, everybody wants him and he wants also to, to come back 100%, so make no sense mm. to, to make it uh, happen too, too early, you know. Okay, well, look, we are out of time, but we do have one more question, and it's uh, from Twitter, and Adam almost asked the question when he mentioned 2016. Um, this comes from uh, Matthias van Eekhoven. Um, he says, or he, he asks, who is on your shopping list <laughs> <laughs> for 2016? And he's given a list of names as well. Uh, DeSalle, maybe Tixier, uh, Gio, what about even Sean Simpson? Yeah, you know, all available riders are on the list. You know, we have some priority, and, and then we... We like maybe like uh, maybe Ryan can be also on the list, you know. But it's it's all starting discussions at the moment, so it's it's a bit too early to. I'm sorry, but that answer is far too easy. <laughs> That's far too easy. I knew as soon as I you did the, uh, the political. It's political. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm sorry. There's on a piece of paper there. Yeah. Like. <laughs> There's a contract in the truck somewhere already. Yeah. <laughs> but um, anyway, we are out of time. But Francois Lamore, thanks for joining us here. Of course, team, monager, uh, team manager from uh, Monster Energy Kawasaki Racing Team. Thanks also to Adam Wheeler on trackoffroad.com and uh, Max Nagel and Jordi Tixier earlier on. Well, it is round nine. It's the halfway point in the season. We're in Tony Cairoli's backyard. Will he win? just like he did last year or will there be an upset in the results join us for the races live tomorrow as always on mxgptv.com thanks for watching we'll see you uh, next time when we go to teuschenthal in germany see ya